Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion, and I'm Bill Stone. In a couple of years ago now, I made a video explaining how climate science is not a science, and it is, in fact, a religion. Now, at that time, my production values were considerably lower than they are now, and additionally, the video was a clip from a live stream. Now, what with recent weather developments in the United States, we're seeing provincial, uneducated nitwits like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, always referred to as Red Cortez on this show, claim that weather is a result of climate change. Now, since this is scientifically laughable, I've decided that it's time for a reboot of my Climate Science Is Not Science video. Hopefully, my updated production values will make it a little more, more approachable. Now, you might ask yourself, why am I qualified to discuss science? Well, I'm a scientist, specifically a computer scientist. It says so on my college degree. But I got that at a time when computer science actually mattered. There was no information technology as we think of it today. Standing on the shoulders of the giants who came before us, myself and people of my generation used computer science to create information technology, and we built major parts of the information with it. I employed the scientific method on a daily basis for over 40 years, so I'm intimately familiar with how it works. The scientific method has brought us the magnificent science fictional world that we live in today, and it really is a science fictional world. When I was born, none of what we take for granted existed, and by the time I die, everything we take for granted to now will be replaced by something even more science fictional. Without the scientific method, we would literally, not figuratively, be starving and shivering in the dark. The scientific method is highly structured and includes at least the following steps. First, you make a hypothesis. That is, you say to yourself, this is how I think something works. Then you test the hypothesis by designing laboratory tests that will show if your hypothesis is correct or not. If the hypothesis doesn't test as correct, well, you go back, you come up with a new hypothesis, and you start over. And you keep doing this hypothesis test cycle until you find a hypothesis that tests true. Then you hand it off to hundreds or even thousands of scientists worldwide, and they do the exact same experiments under the exact same conditions. And if they all get the same results, then your hypothesis is probably correct, and it can be termed a theory. But it's only probably correct, because any theory is always subject to new data that could disprove it at any time. There's no such thing as settled science. Anything that we think we know about the universe can be disproven by new data tomorrow. Anyone who says that any science is settled is either a fool or a charlatan. Now, climate science is not science because it does not utilize the scientific method. It can be refuted on that basis alone. You need know nothing more than the scientific method to know that climate science is nonsensical claptrap. And in this video, I'm going to explain how climate science does not utilize the scientific method and therefore should be rejected by any rational human being. I'll also discuss how the globally deadly outcomes are of being an adherent to the climate science religion. So to begin with, Climate science has no meaningful data. Accurate temperature readings are only available after the invention of the digital probe thermometer in 1970. And there's a link in my description box to the patent of the digital thermometer so that you can see I'm not lying. Prior to the invention of the digital thermometer, water and mercury-based thermometers were used. And the most accurate mercury thermometers used by the U.S. Naval Observatory, which was the gold standard for temperature measurement, could be off by a degree or more in either direction. Since climate science measures changes in temperatures of fractions of a degree, this can only be achieved with a highly accurate digital thermometer. This was impossible prior to 1970. Therefore, we only have about 50 years worth of accurate temperature readings in a very limited number of geographic areas. This isn't enough data to come to any kind of conclusion about global temperatures. And we certainly have ice core samples, and while they tell us interesting things in general about temperatures over a long period of time, they aren't fine-grained enough to observe minor fluctuations. 
The global temperature operates in geological rather than human time. To truly have enough data to make rational predictions, we need temperature readings from all over the globe that begin now, extend through the next ice age, 30 or 40,000 years, and then back to where we are now in that cycle. Anything less tells us nothing about minor, irrelevant temperature changes and certainly nothing about long-term trends. Climate science simply lacks any meaningful data. Climate science also lacks a control group. A control group is something that is exactly like what you're experimenting on, except that you don't experiment on it. Without a control group, you don't know if your experiment is actually having any effect. Climate scientists believe that a computer model is a control group, but it's not, and here I speak from my own area of expertise. Particularly with large, complex systems like an entire planet, you cannot create accurate models. If you could, you'd have a perfect prediction machine. It could predict your every move and action. A computerized model would need to take into effect and identify every dependent and independent variable that makes up the entire planet. And this is simply impossible, and it always will be. A real control group would be a planet identical to Earth without a single human being have ever trod upon it. Climate science simply lacks a control group. Climate science also lacks falsifiability. Falsifiability is the conditions under which you know your hypothesis is inaccurate. You need falsifiability to know when you're wrong. Otherwise, you're always right no matter what happens in objective reality. There is no condition under which we know that climate science hypotheses are incorrect. Climate science lacks falsifiability. Climate science also lacks reproducibility. Real science can be reproduced again and again by scientists all over the world. Climate science experiments are only reproducible using a single data set under extremely rigid circumstances. Often, replica replicability is only achievable via computer models, which I've already shown are not true models of the entire planet. When using competing data sets and conditions, experiments are not consistently rep reproducible. Climate science has no reproducibility. Climate science also has no predictability. Now, real science can accurately predict events or phenomenon. No climate science hypothesis has ever accurately predicted anything. They've all predicted doomsday for over a century incorrectly. And they've been predicting for some time global extinction within 10 years. And when they make those, those various predictions, the 10 years come and go and nothing happens. Now, as an example, here is a very incomplete list of failed climate-based doomsday scenarios made within my lifetime. Hold on a minute. This is going to be a little long. So this is just within my lifetime. If you go back farther, you can find them at least a century ago. 1966 predicted that all oil will be gone in 10 years. 1967 predicted there will be global famines by 1975. 1968 predicted overpopulation will spread worldwide. 1969 predicted everyone will disappear in a cloud of blue smoke by 1989. Now that one was weird. Had to look it up. It had to do with the supposed side effects of breeder nuclear reactors. In, the 19, in 1970, a number of different things were predicted. First, all the world's natural resources will be used up by 2000. Urban citizens will require gas masks by 1985. Nitrogen buildup will make all land on Earth unusable. Decaying pollution will kill all fish on Earth. Killer bees will massacre humans on a global scale. And that the U.S. will be subject to water rationing by 1974 and food rationing by 1980. Then in 1971, predicted that a new ice age will hit by 2020 or 2030. 1972 predicted a new ice age will hit by 2070. 1974 predicted that satellite data showed an imminent ice age and that ozone depletion is an immediate danger to all life on Earth. 1976 predicted scientific consensus is that the Earth is 
cooling and that global famine is imminent. It was settled science. 1977, the U.S. Department of Energy said that oil will peak in the 1990s. In 1978, it was predicted that there was no end in sight to the 30-year cooling trend. 1980 predicted that acid rain will kill all life in lakes and waterways. 1988 predicted a number of things. First, that regional droughts will occur in the 1990s. That temperature in Washington, D.C. will hit record highs in that same year, and it did not. That the Maldives Islands will be underwater by 2019. 1989 predicted that rising sea levels will uh, obliterate nations by 2000. And that New York City's West Side Highway will be underwater by 2019. 1996 predicted that peak oil will occur in 2020. 2000 predicted that future children won't know what snow is. 2002 predicted that there will be global famine in 10 years if we don't give up eating fish, meat, and dairy products. And also that peak oil will occur in 2020. 2004 predicted that Great Britain will resemble Siberia by 2024. 2005 predicted that Manhattan will be underwater by 2015. 2006 predicted super hurricanes will become completely commonplace. 2008 predicted that the Arctic will be ice free by 2018. 2009 predicted Prince Charles. He stated outright that we have 96 months to save the world. UK Prime Minister also stated that we have 50 days to save the planet from catastrophe. And of course, the Arctic will be ice free by 2014. In 2013, it was predicted that the Arctic will be ice-free by 2015. And in 2014, it was predicted that there, were, there was only 500 days before clim climate chaos. In 2015, it was predicted by Red Cortez. She predicted death of all life on Earth in 12 years. In 2019, Greta Thunberg, Red Cortez, and others predicted that climate change will end all life on Earth in less than 10 years. And also, Chinese scientists predicted an ice age in the immediate future. That was an incomplete list. None of these predictions have ever come to pass. Climate science simply lacks predictability. However, just like a religion, climate science is a belief system that operates on faith. Now this is not intended to offend my viewers of faith. It's simply that the difference between science and religion is faith. It doesn't mean that your faith is wrong, simply that it can't be proven scientifically. Climate science fails to use the scientific method. It operates on faith alone, and that makes it exactly the same as a religion. But unlike most religions, climate science is dangerous. Now, I say this as an atheist with no skin on in the game for any religion. I simply observe them from the outside. And most of them are peaceful. It's faithful or made up of people who have chosen that faith voluntarily. Climate science operates on forcing people to believe it via government edict and brainwashing. Now, I'm unaware of any other religion that leads its adherents to believe that murdering 1.2 billion people is the right thing to do. Because that's what climate science religion preaches as being necessary to save the planet. The mass death of at least 15% of the world population. Climate science is pro-communist and pro-totalitarian. Because in order to implement its tenets, a worldwide communist totalitarian state is required. Communism is bad, okay? In the 20th century alone, it killed 150 or so million people. In the 21st century, it is presently decimating Venezuela along with many other places. Communism and socialism always fail, killing millions in the process. If climate science gets a worldwide communist totalitarian state, it will kill at least 15% of the world's population, or 1.2 billion people. There's really no end to the number of people that communism can kill if left, uh, left unchecked. But at best, you will be left starving and shivering in the dark. As a prime example of socialism inside the United States, simply look over my shoulder, because behind me, is part of the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota. It is consistently rated the number one slum in America. Why? 
because it has been held hostage under a socialist regime for 181 years. Communism and socialism always fail, killing millions in the process. The reason for this is best articulated by Lord Acton of Great Britain in the 19th century, when he said, Power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. The more power that you give to any one or any group in government, the more they use this power for selfish ends. Those ends rarely, if ever, include the good of those that they rule. This is why the United States' own federal government is riddled from top to bottom with power-mad sociopathic narcissists. They simply pursue more and more power entirely at the expense of the citizenry. This is why the federal government rarely accomplishes anything, and when it does, it's almost universally bad for the citizenry. When you invest nationwide power in a group, they always become corrupt. If you implement a worldwide communist totalitarian government, it will not do what the governed want. It will do what those in power want, and it will do so by killing the governed. It always has, and it always will. You will at best wind up in the same living conditions as those poor souls behind me on the Pine Ridge. Power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And that's all that I have to say about that. I would love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your com comments, questions, and nasty remarks. I'll do my best to respond. So thanks for watching. That's all the time that we have today for this episode of Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.